21. Refer to Appendix J for solubility products for calcium salts. Determine which of the calcium salts listed is the most soluble in moles per liter and which is the most soluble in grams per liter. Wow. Okay, this one's going to be a crazy one. So uh, there's a lot to do here. So let's get down to business. So what I did was I went to Appendix J of this textbook, and it turns out that there's seven calcium salts. Woohoo! So we're going to try to do this a little quickly because it's kind of like repetition and pattern recognition. So basically, I took each salt here with their respective KSP values. That's what we had to do. And from these, we just have to figure out which one is the most soluble in moles per liter. Let's figure that one out first before we find out the grams per liter one. Keep in mind that solubility in moles per liter is the same as your molar solubility. So they're just basically asking you for the molar solubility, uh, you know, of each of these five, uh, each of these seven uh, salts. Now, in order to do this, we first have to find out how many ions are broken down. So let's just do this pretty quickly. So for calcium hydroxide, right, the break is between the calcium and the hydroxide, right? And we would have calcium, which is a 2 plus charge, that's in group 2, and hydroxide is always a minus 2, uh, sorry, hydroxide is always a minus 1 charge, but you just have to tell me how many you have. I had one calcium, but I have two hydroxides, so I'm just going to put that there. Let's just keep pattern recognition and do the same thing for the next one. The break between the calcium and the carbonate is between the calcium and the carbonate, right? So it's going to be calcium, that's always the 2 plus here, and the carbonate is a polyatomic that always has a negative 2 charge. And there's one calcium for every one carbonate, so I don't have to put any coefficients. Next one. Now what's going to happen with these two hydrates, the one that has water is attached to it? Molar solubility only comes from the salt because remember water is a liquid and liquids do not go in your KSP equation. So I'm only going to look at this. We have calcium and then we have the polyatomic sulfate. The break is here. And this would break into Ca2+, and then the SO4 sulfate is always a 2 minus charge. And one calcium, one calcium, one sulfate, one sulfate. So no need to balance that. It's already balanced. And the same for this uh, hydrate, right? We only look at that ionic compound in the front. C2O4 is oxalate. So that's a polyatomic. So the break is between the calcium and the oxalate. So I have Ca2+. plus. And then I have C2O4, 2 minus, one calcium, one calcium, one oxalate, one oxalate, so no need to balance. Keep going. We have hydrogen phosphate, HPO4, so the break is between the calcium and the hydrogen phosphate. So Ca2 plus and HPO4, that's a 2 minus. One calcium, one calcium, one hydrogen phosphate, one hydrogen phosphate. So let's keep going. Now it's calcium phosphate. The break is between the calcium and the PO4, right, the phosphate. So Ca2 plus and the PO4, 3 minus. Phosphate is always a 3 minus charge. And now let's balance. I have three calciums, so I have to put a three in front of the calcium, and I have two phosphates. So I have to put a three in front of the calcium, and I have to put a two in front of the phosphate. Last one, calcium fluoride. The break is between the calcium and the fluorine. So I have Ca2 plus and F minus one. Just got to balance it. There was two fluorines, so I have to put a two in front of there, and then there's one calcium. Okay, so the first step, done. Now let's just take that and turn them into variables. And all we're going to do is we're just going to look at how many we have. So for example, calcium, there was only one of them, and maybe, uh, let's see. <laughs> 
Maybe if I can, I might need to drop this just a tad down. There's a method to my madness. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. So now, calcium 2 plus. I just had one of them, so that would be X. Since I had two hydroxides, this would turn into 2X. Now let's keep doing it the same for the others. I have one of these, so that's X. I have one carbonate, so that's X. One calcium, so X. One sulfate, that's X. One calcium, X. One oxalate, X. One calcium, X. One hydrogen phosphate, X. Three calciums, 3X. Two phosphates, 2X. One calcium, X. Two fluorines, 2X. Okay, second part done. Now what we're going to do is, remember, when we're starting to write our KSP, it's those products raised to the coefficients. So we have our starting material. Now we have to raise these values to the coefficients. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to link it with this value. The KSP, which is that. So I'm going to say now this equals the concentration of X times the other one. And now we have to raise both of them to the coefficients, a.k.a. the numbers in the front. So this would be a 1 and a 2. So the 2x1 has to be raised to the second. Anything that has a 1, you could raise it to the first, but that's the same thing. So now we came up with this expression, this equation. We have to do the same for all the other 6. So let's give it a shot. The KSP value, 8.7 times 10 to the negative 9th, would equal just these two products raised to those numbers in the front. But it's just x times x, and x times x is x squared. Let's keep going. Here's my other KSP for this one, 6.1 times 10 to the negative fifth. So this would be equal to x times x, so x squared. Let's keep going. This is the KSP, right? 1.96 times 10 to the negative eighth. X times X, so this equals X squared. Same thing for this one. 1 1.3 times 10 to the negative 32 equals X times X, so that equals X squared. Uh, 7.0 times 10 to the negative seventh equals, all right, now this one's going to get a little hairy. It's the 3x times the 2x. And then you have to raise each one by the number that's in front. So the 3x is going to be raised to the third, and the 2x is going to be raised to the second. Last one, KSP, 4.0 times 10 to the negative 11th equals x times 2x. And since there's a 2 here, I have to raise it to the second. Okay, now we actually have to do the math. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly just run through all of the, um, the answers here. All right, so I'm going to do this number, and let's see if your answer comes out to mine. So I'm going to just say here, x equals. There's tons of other videos on this channel that goes through the math. So if you're having a little trouble, just check out one of the other uh, you know, questions in the playlist. I guarantee you that I will be going over how to do each step individually. But let's see if we can just do it separately and come to the same answer. So let's see. I'm first going to do the 4x squared. That's, uh, you know, well, yeah, 2x squared. So 1.3 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 4. And then I'm going to raise it to the one third. And I guess for all of these, it looks like pretty close to two sig figs. Nobody cares about sig figs because we just want the one that's most soluble. So I'm just going to put everybody into two sig figs. So I have 6.9 times 10 to the negative third. And remember that this is all in molarity. Okay, so did you get that number? 
I hope you did. Let's do the next one now. X equals, all it looks like for this one, I just have to square root 8.7 times 10 to the negative ninth. So I get 9.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's molarity. Let's keep going. S another square root, square root of 6.1 times 10 to the negative fifth. I get 7.8 times 10 to the negative third molarity. The next one, another square root. I love those. 1.96 times 10 to the negative eighth. Right? Yep. I get 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. Three more, another x squared, beautiful. 1.3 times 10 to the negative 32. I get 1.1 times 10 to the negative 16th. Oh boy, now this one, remember, it's three times three times three, which is 27 times four, because two squared is four. So 27 times four is 108. So I have to take the seven times 10 to the negative seventh divided by 108. And then how many X's do I have? I have five of them. So I'm going to raise that to the one fifth. And I come out with 2.3. 2.3 times 10 to the negative second molarity. And then let's see, I got 4x cubed. So 4 times 10 to the negative 11th divided by 4. And I'm going to cube root that. I get x equals 2.2, 2, if we round to two sec figs, 2.2 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. Okay, now for molar solubility, it's always going to be the x value. So now we just have to find out which one is the most soluble, and the most soluble is always going to be the greatest number. So we just got to pick the greatest number. Let's see. Uh, I got 10 to the negative 3. Anything bigger than that? Ah, I got 10 to the negative 2. Since this is the biggest exponent, Ca3, PO42, would be the most soluble in moles per liter. So maybe I will just put down here. The answer is the Ca3, PO42. That's the most soluble in moles per liter. Because moles per liter, remember, is molarity. Now we have to find out which one is the most soluble in grams per liter. So the only thing that we have to do is we just have to convert the moles per liter, which is these values, into grams per liter. Remember, molarity is moles per liter. So if I want to convert from moles per liter to grams per liter, it's just a mole to gram conversion. All we have to do to each one of these numbers, right, all seven of them, is to times by the mole, molar mass, right? Moles to grams, basically you're multiplying by the mass on the periodic table. So now I'm going to go back to the, the other ones, all seven of them, and just quickly find out their molar masses, times them to the x values to get our new value. And I will put the number below uh, in red. So the blue is for soluble moles per liter. The number on the bottom red is going to be the grams per liter. So I have CaOH2, 40.08 plus 2 times 16 plus 2 times 1.008. And now I'm going to times that by the answer, 6.9 times 10 to the negative third. So, and I'm going to do two sig figs. So I'll say 0 0.51 grams per liter. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the calcium carbonate. Uh, we have 40.08 plus 12.01 plus 3 times 16. Then I'm going to take the 9.3 uh, times, 
And I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to take that number and I'm going to times it by 9.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. So I get 9.3 times 10 to the negative third grams per liter. So that one's already out because the calcium hydroxide number is way larger. Um, okay, so now just note here, guys, that when you're taking a solubility for grams per liter, you do have to include all of the grams per every element. So now for these two, I do have to go in and find out what the mass is with the waters and then times it by that X value. So I have 40.08 plus the sulfur, 32.06 plus 4 times 16 plus 4 times 1.008 plus two more oxygens, and then that number times 7.8 times 10 to the negative 3. Ooh, big solubility here, 1.6 grams per liter. So that one's in the lead. All right, let's see if the other one can do it. Uh, calcium, 40.08 plus 2 times 12 plus 4 times 16 plus... 2 times 1.008 plus another 16, and I'm going to multiply that by 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. Nope, didn't cut it. 0 0.020 grams per liter. We have three more. I mean, this one times 10 to the negative 16th. I mean, it's not going to, it's not going to beat it. So we can try. We can try. Calcium, 40.08 plus 1.008, plus a phosphorus, 30.97, plus 4 times 16. I'm going to times that number by 1.1 times 10 to the negative 16th. Yeah, I'll put it over here. 1.5 times 10 to the negative 14th grams per mole. So that's completely out. Let's see. The calcium phosphate, which won before. So we have 3 times 40.08 plus 2 times 30.97 plus 4 times 2 is 8, so 8, eight oxygens. And I'm going to multiply that by 2.3 times 10 to the negative second. Wowzers. 7.1 grams per mole. So now that one won. Let's just see. If the calcium fluoride can do it, uh, 40.08 plus 2 times 19, times that number by 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Nope, 0 .1, 0 0.017 grams per liter. I don't know why I put grams per mole for these. I think it's just a habit. All the other ones I put grams per liter. So grams per liter, grams per liter. So for this one, you still have to look for the highest number. And this is the highest number. This is the highest number for both. For molar solubility and for the, you know, the solubility in grams. Because they had the both the highest one. Interesting. So grams per liter one, it's the same one. CA3PO42. And yeah, that answers the question. Okay. Hopefully this helped. <laughs> Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Uh, that helps us tremendously with the YouTube, whatever it's called, the algorithm, whatever you want to call it. But it just helps us get the word out there. Thank you so much for that. I will be talking to you later. Bye-bye.